Korea's webcomics gets noticed in the global market. Tapas Media is a Korean webcomics platform company that has proven huge success in Silicon Valley, U.S., and their webcomics receiving 4.5 billion cumulative views. Today, we have Tapas Media CEO and founder Chang Kim in our studio. When the U.S. comics market was largely comprised of publications, his company made its debut in the U.S., pushing for what the locals weren't quite familiar with, the webtoons. Six years later, Tapas Media now has over 48,000 creators and 2 million readers, becoming one of the top webcomics platforms in the U.S. On today's Heart to Heart, we meet with CEO Chang Kim. Opportunity. Silicon Valley is where countless startups rise and fall. A web comics platform company that brought digital comics to Silicon Valley is a success story. And the man behind the success is Kim Chang Won, Chang Kim, CEO and founder of Tapas Media. Hello and welcome to our Dart. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, Cheng, you worked at Samsung and Google before you actually mm. launched Tapas Media. That was in 2012, and you worked for Samsung and Google before that. Mm -hmm. Now, not one, but two companies uh, that are known to be very difficult to enter. So could you first of all tell us about uh, uh, your work previous to the launch of mm. Tapas Media and uh, the work you were involved with? Um, I guess... You know, my career has been mostly about building technology platforms for mm. uh, content creators. Um, so, like Google at Google, I was running Blogger.com, which is their blogging solution. Uh, the way I joined Google was through an acquisition of uh, a startup company that I co-founded in Korea, mm -hmm. and uh, that was also a blogging software company. Uh, before that, at Samsung, I was running um, you know mobile content strategy for Samsung's mobile division. So. Yeah, I guess like mobile content platform, you know, those are kind of my uh, keywords. Um, but yeah. And that was many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so Some now, years ago. Yeah, yeah. let's take you as, us to Tapas Media. So tell us about Tapas. So first of all, Tapas the word is um, like a small bite-sized food yeah. in Spanish. Uh -huh. um, so uh, what we do is... Uh, there's two different sides. Mm. For the readers, it's a really great way to discover and consume uh, really good bite-sized stories on their phones. Um, but we really think about the content creators first. So it's pretty much like YouTube for uh, people we call IP creators. Mm -hmm. So people who are publishing their own you know, original stories in the form of uh, web comics or online graphic novels or novels. Uh, so the next generation, J.K. Rowling or Stan Lee, you know, uh -huh. the people who really aspire to build their story franchise. Um, these are the, the content creators that we like to serve. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a publishing platform for these content creators and there's awesome social community around, you know, uh, storytelling and content. So, so it's a really awesome platform and community. Mm -hmm. I think I saw in one of the interviews that you did, uh, actually read that mm -hmm. the products are called Tapastic as well? It used to. Very interesting yeah. names. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, a, you know, we made up a word like mm -hmm. tapas and fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> I figured. Okay. Yeah. So tapas media is like the YouTube of comics, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and I'd like to ask you how many episodes or web comics are actually posted mm -hmm. and uh, how many views have they generated so far? Yeah, so, so far we have uh, all the content that we uh, have on the platform has generated like 4.5 billion times mm -hmm. views. Um, we have about 70,000 content series published by 48,000 plus, you know, content creators. Uh -huh. um, every month we have like almost 2 million monthly active users um, coming to our site. Uh, mm -hmm. They're spending like 70 million minutes per month um, reading the content on our, That's on our platform. Wow, these are yeah. huge numbers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now before we move on to uh, the many questions I have ready, I, I just want to clear this up. In mm. Korea, we are very familiar with the term webtoons. Right. Okay, uh, but not so much in the U.S. or I guess elsewhere around the world. So could you maybe tell us the difference between webtoons and webcomics? 
I would say it's the same thing, mm -hmm. mostly. Uh, it's like a different way to call it. Mm -hmm. um, so webtoons. Um, so yeah, in Korea, we call webtoons. Um, and then, you know, we're talk talking about full color, digital kind of comics or uh -huh. graphic novels that you can enjoy on your phone. Okay. Um, in the U.S., a uh, more familiar term, more commonly used term is uh, web comics. Web comics. Um, but I would say, you know, those are both just like, you know, stories told visually. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people who are looking for more stories to read, you know, they can you know, read web, com web comics or webtoons. It's uh -huh. just like a story told visually, okay. I would say. So it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. It's just that in Korea, we're much more familiar with the term webtoons. Mm. So here comes the next why question. Why yeah. webtoons? Um, had you always had an interest in web comics? Sorry, I'm yeah. so used to webtoons. <laughs> um, or should I say, did you have this belief that web comics had great potential? Mm. Yeah, we, uh, we were really fascinated by uh, the success of some of the Asian, sort of like, a, you know, Korean mm -hmm. and China web tune platforms, mm -hmm. um, so not just in terms of building stories for the mobile audience, but also providing a lot of original stories mm -hmm. for uh, TV dramas and movies, so, you know, what they call IP, the intellectual uh -huh. properties. Uh -huh. um, so it's a really fascinating platform, so we were inspired by, uh, you know, those uh, platforms in Asia, mm -hmm. we were trying to find something like that in the U.S. market uh, or global market. Yes. We couldn't really find one. So we were like, hey, why don't we actually start one <laughs> and build it ourselves? In Silicon Valley. Yes. So that was the reason why you, you know, decided to start your business in Silicon Valley in the U.S. and not in Korea? Um, so I, I was in Silicon Valley back mm -hmm. then. Oh, so see. definitely, you know, we wanted to start um, the business there. Uh -huh. But now I would say we're both Silicon Valley and Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have a small office in China mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, we do a lot of like trans-Pacific businesses. Yeah, the yeah. business has grown. Yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Netflix and YouTube also have their technology bases in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I heard. Yes. So what is Silicon Valley's, you know, competitive edge or advantage when it comes to research in content platform uh, you know, technology, or even mm. starting a business. Yes. Um, so specifically for uh, content businesses, mm -hmm. there is more efforts being made to kind of combine the strengths of Silicon Valley and Hollywood, for example. Mm -hmm. Like Hollywood, you know, uh, traditionally has been more about content, storytelling, right. more like a right brain uh -huh. stuff, uh, versus like con uh, Silicon Valley is more about technology, you know, mm -hmm. uh, coding, mm -hmm. uh, more like a left brainy kind yeah. of stuff. Um, there's more efforts being made to kind of marry, you know, those two. So Netflix, YouTube being great examples uh, of, you know, those efforts. Uh -huh. um, and I think that part of the reason is because uh, data is becoming more important mm -hmm. for a content business. So if you, for example, Netflix or YouTube, uh, if you think about those, um, then it's a lot of that is recommending the right content for you mm. based on the data. Right, I mean, there's right. more, like so much content out there. Too much. And almost, that, too much. <laughs> almost too much. <laughs> but uh, so it's becoming more and more important uh -huh. to kind of deliver the right content mm -hmm. for each individual users. And that's where data, you know, comes into play. Mm -hmm. So data, analysis, technology, all these are kind of like, again, you know, where Silicon Valley has a lot of strengths. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, then what was it like when you first started Tapas Media, for example, how many creators, yeah. also called writers, did you begin with? Yeah. I mean, what was it like? Any challenges? I think, I mean, it was full of cha you yeah. know, challenge, right? Uh -huh. So I think we started with like six people. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, we, I personally met a lot of creators myself uh -huh. and uh, I was just like, you know, going through these meetings and trying to introduce our vision. Uh, heard a lot of no, uh -huh. you know, no's. <laughs> um, but uh, the first six uh, somehow bought into our vision. Mm -hmm. And obviously now, you know, we have like 48,000. So, you know, there's, the platform has grown <laughs> a lot. But um, yeah, anytime like you try to start a business from nothing, you know, there's a lot of a lot of challenges. Uh -huh. And we're talking about an amazing range of selections. I mean, you know, web comics. How were you able to gather so much, so mm. many of them? Yeah, so we, we try to, and then obviously, you know, because we have a platform uh -huh. now, the platform, you know, what they call platform effect mm -hmm. kicks in. So every single month we have about 1,200 uh, 
uh, new creators coming mm -hmm. to you know join our platform uh -huh. um, because they heard about our platform from their friends and other uh, uh, other creators that they know. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that you know that effect coming in into play. Um, and um, yeah, so like in terms of variety, you know, we try to like give the most amount of like free, you know, uh, freedom of expression to I the see. users, uh -huh. to the creators. Uh -huh. So uh, we don't try to like the middleman too much. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, we give uh, a lot of freedom to the creators in terms of expression. Okay. Yes. Tell us about the creators that you began with. You said six, first of all. Yeah. That's how many you began with. So could you tell us a bit more about them and are mm. they still with you? Yeah, so a lot of uh, a lot of the creators that we started with uh -huh. are still like you know with us, which yeah. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the examples I can think of right now is um, we have this creator. Uh, they're actually based in Singapore. Uh, we're a global platform, uh -huh. so like the creators come from all over the world, and these you know they happen to be coming from Singapore, and um, you know they they're doing this like uh, you know you know what they call silent comic uh -huh. uh, which is like there's no caption it's like an all oh, images mm -hmm. um so because you know or english first platform mm -hmm. and then you know these creators um you know happen to be not the english as the first you know language speakers so they drew out and then you know they had a huge success on our platform uh from our platform only they had over 100 million views wow. on their series uh -huh. and now we're trying to help them kind of pitch you know their stories into uh, animation series and uh, possibly feature films uh, as well. So what we try to do is to um, help the creators become more professional mm -hmm. just by publishing on our platform. Mm -hmm. Then what are your main tasks at Tapas? Tapas. Um, I do many, many different things. <laughs> <laughs> Startup CEOs, you uh -huh. know, they, they just like do a lot of different things. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, I spend a lot of time on, you know, investor relationship uh, and recruiting the right people, uh, creating the right culture on, the, you know, within the mm -hmm. company, uh, setting the vision, yeah, those kind of things. Then among those things, what would you say are like the biggest or the biggest challenge as a CEO? Mm. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can go on <laughs> forever. <laughs> sure, yeah. uh, it's like, you know, full of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, Communication, Communication, I think, is very you know challenging uh -huh. um, as always. So I, you know, we always try to over communicate rather than under communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so and you know because our company is a little bit distributed, we have an uh, office in Korea, U.S., yes. China. Uh, we also have uh, people working from other U.S. cities. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have one person working out of Malaysia. So it's all over the place, and, and I think that's the case uh, for other companies more and more, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the workforce is becoming more distributed. Uh, so for those companies, you know, communication is always challenging. Um, right. I mean, I tend to be one of those people who are kind of old school, like, you know, I like, I like to like talk to people directly and uh -huh. then, hey, like once we have a problem, then- uh, Do you travel to, <laughs> to talk? Yeah, it's like, you know, we, <laughs> let's go, you know, grab a room and then talk uh -huh. it out, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, I talk to, to people mm. and then uh, try to come up with a solution right there. Uh -huh. um, but then uh, the problem of that for distributed company is other people may not know about that, that conversation. Right. So we try to, uh, every time we have a conversation, we try to also communicate that to other people mm -hmm. through written communication, ah. which is a double challenge, but it's very important. Okay, through written communication. Yes. So you try to over communicate. Yes. And I was wondering with so many of your creators that are, you know, all across the world, it would be very difficult to communicate with each and every one of them. Yes. Uh, so, ah, yeah. that's how it works. Sounds very <laughs> challenging. Okay, now I wonder what your day looks like at Tapas Media, so let's take a quick break. And here is a video clip of Chang Kim and his daily life. Tapas Media in Silicon Valley. And this is where CEO Chang Kim wrote a success story with his light bulb moments and passion against uncertainty. 사실은 아이디어는 사업한테서도 1% 5% 밖에 안 되는 거잖아요. 결국 나머지는 다 실행이기 때문에 한국이든 미국이든 결국 유저를 만족시켜 주는 거. 그것이 가장 중요하다고 생각하거든요. His passion is now leading him to another set of challenges. CEO Chang Kim is here to tell us all about his great leap forward. DC and Marvel Comics obviously are very well established in uh, the US comics industry. Mm. So how was Tapas Media able to gain popularity in America? 
Yeah, so uh, DC Marvel, it, these are more like a print comic uh -huh. uh, publishers. Right. Um, we're almost targeting exactly opposite group of people. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of target users, target demographics, uh, we're almost you know exactly opposite. So uh -huh. for DC uh, Marvel comics, uh, we're talking about like males over like 35 year olds and you know, people <laughs> who buy and collect the comic yeah. books. Uh, our user base tends to be a lot younger, ah. so 17 to 24 female audience. Mm -hmm. um, so our user base is about 70% female, which is very interesting. Um, and uh, these are like, you know, mobile phone uh, users, like the millennials, uh, looking for just like uh, awesome stories, uh -huh. a lot more mainstream stories. Um, so they're definitely not superhero, you know, fans. Uh -huh. So it's like an opposite market. There are a lot of female superhero fans Sure, sure, there. sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> not me, but there are many, <laughs> I know for, yeah. as a matter of fact. Um, then let's talk about the uh, material on Tapas Media. I mean, the range yeah. of genres, because I understand there are a wide range of genres. Mm. Tell us about them. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of different genres. Mm -hmm. uh, what tends to be more popular uh, is uh, romance, fantasy. Uh -huh. um, so I think like people like to experience a different world mm. by, you know, through stories. Uh -huh. So uh, I had a chance to talk to, you know, someone at like a big media company mm -hmm. in terms of like, I was asking what kind of stories are you trying to develop? What, what are you looking for? And then um, he, you know, his take was exactly what I you know, said, is, which is like, you know, people want to experience different world through storytelling. So you only like leave uh, your current whatever, like your professions. I mean, you know, the, the kind of experience you can get from the real life is a little limited. Right. Uh, so the power of storytelling is it lets you live different or at least like, you know, give you a glimpse of like different life and different walks of life. Yeah. So. At times we kind of want to escape from our yes yeah yeah reality definitely. just get away forget <laughs> about things forget about our worries yeah daydream so, even yeah like a lot of our content tends to be short like bite sized uh -huh. again like you know that that's exactly. where the name uh -huh. tapas comes from so it's like you know when you're on the line or waiting for something or you know uh, when you're waiting for train or even during commute uh, you know these people you know, uh, flip the phone out uh -huh. and then they read a chapter of a story mm -hmm. and, you know, that's like, you know, that's, that's their kind of like a five minutes of, you know, escape from the daily, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. busy life. Sure. Yeah. I'm also curious about the uh, Korean creators. So mm -hmm. how many web comics do you have created by Korean uh, creators or writers? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that many. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I would say we have around 100. Titles, 100. yeah, that we uh, found from Korea and then we translated into English. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now translation. Yes. I'm sure that process is very, very complicated. It takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, how is that done? Yeah. So, um, so we we call it localization mm -hmm. rather than translation. Mm -hmm. So translation is just like you know from one language to another. Uh -huh. um, it goes far deeper than that. So obviously we have a, a group of people who are experts in uh, transliteration and mm. almost like creating the story again. I see. So um, we have multi-step, you know, multiple steps involved in the process. So the first is uh, somebody who is just like translating the language. Mm -hmm. And then the second step would be somebody who understands the story can mm -hmm. also review if the story was right. And then we also have a, you know, what we call QC, quality control process, where uh, eventually people who don't speak any language, uh, like Korean, mm -hmm. we also bring titles from China and Japan as well. Uh -huh. So people who don't speak Chinese, people who don't speak Japanese, you know, they go through the material and then mm -hmm. just trying to make sure that the story flows really right. So we have multiple steps involved in the process. Wow. Because I'm sure that, that the creator has a, you know, a purpose or you know a specific message they want to deliver mm -hmm. through their webcomic yes. and that needs to be delivered correctly definitely yeah, and that's that's the tricky so, part. yeah i mean honestly sometimes you know it's, it's tricky i mean uh -huh. not 100% there's no you know it's very difficult um, uh, you know there are certain things that you can only understand if you're part of the culture right. I mean, there are those uh -huh. things but uh, but but i think like our team does a really good job of like you know making sure mm -hmm. they translate as closely as possible. Mm -hmm. And also, how do you choose your creators? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I was wondering if you intend to publish a series of, uh, you know, comics that you think or in the past thought might mm -hmm. cater to, you know, the American audiences or specific audiences. Uh, how is that done? So when we uh, try to bring 
content titles from mm. Korea, for example. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, you know, there's a lot of stories that are that we really like, but we cannot bring because it's too Korean. Ah, I, I mean, see. there's again, you know, there's uh -huh. no, you know, there's no way mm. uh, if you're outside of Korea, you can really understand the story. So we don't take those stories. Mm -hmm. um, but then the you know other stories. Uh, so we look at try to look at the stories quality. I mean, you know, good stories are good stories. Uh, there's certain universal yes. kind of value. Uh -huh. So. Uh, we try to see how complete the story is, you know, how kind of like a, you know, just like overall story quality. So mm -hmm. um, the, the, the sto story titles that are popular in Korea tend to be what's popular outside of Korea too. Okay, so we're talking about partnerships between, you know, Korean companies and American companies. Yes. Are there projects that are in the works at the moment? Yeah, so we work with uh, a lot of Korean content providers uh -huh. uh, who develop you know, content uh, titles. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, try to bring those titles to outside of Korea. Uh, we really believe in the power of Korean storytelling. Uh, I mean, obviously K-pop is all the rage, right? right. BTS and all uh -huh. of that. Uh, and K-beauty, uh, you know, a lot of like uh, consumers mm -hmm. really like the Korean beauty products. Um, and uh, Korean drama, you know, has a lot of followings as well. Yes. We think the next wave is uh, what we call K-story. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of storytellers in Korea, uh, but then obviously, you know, the market is a little limited if they're only writing their stories in Korean language only. Uh -huh. So uh, what we can help, even though that's not necessarily our core focus uh -huh. as part of our business, what we can help is to introduce those stories outside of the Korean audience. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of expanding that platform definitely. for them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, since we're talking about global, <laughs> you're here in Korea, so I'd like to ask you, what brings you to Korea this time around? Yeah, so we have an um, office here. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, people who are working from our Seoul office. So mm -hmm. I come, come out here uh, regularly. How and uh, we also have uh, probably like once a quarter-ish, yeah. And uh, we have a, we have some of the investors come, uh, you know, in Korea as well. Uh -huh. So we, it's like a business trip, mm -hmm. and yeah, actually, it's all business trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much would you say has uh, Tapas Media grown uh, since its launch yeah. in 2012? I mean, and what is the secret to, to its success? I mean, like, you know, we started from like six creators. Now we have like 48,000, uh -huh. right? And then uh, obviously when we started, you know, there was nothing, um, like no viewers, uh, probably like two people, like you know, myself and our engineer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in terms of visitors. Um, now we have like two million, you know, multi, you know, multi active users um, spending a lot of time reading content on our platform. So we've come really far. Um, and I think um, our success, a lot of that came from uh, just like, you know, meeting the needs that were not met by traditional media. Mm -hmm. Again, like DC, Marvel, uh, or other companies are only addressing certain segment of the market. Uh -huh. I mean, the whole female, you know, segment, you know, there's n not a lot of content, you know, th there wasn't much content that was specifically uh, created for them mm -hmm. or by them. So like a lot of our creators are also female and young people. So um, like if you're, a young, uh, you know, up and coming creator in terms of publishing your stories, there's not that many options, even to this day. I mean, you uh, try to find a book agent or, you know, getting a book published. Um, you don't just like walk into a book publisher and then get a book signed or <laughs> deal That's signed, true. right? So um, you have to start publishing uh -huh. and then, you know, try to build an audience. Mm. Uh, so we try to provide that place for uh, young up and coming creators. Mm -hmm. So that uh, even though you may not be established, con you know, content creator, you can still be successful. I and I think that was a good, um, good part of our success. Right. Yeah. But of course, success does not come in one day, you know, no. nor a month. Um, it, it did take some time. So sure. what kept you going? I mean, what motivated you to keep going? I mean, mm. What drove you? What was your drive? I think, um, and this can be also my little advice for like people who might be thinking about startups. Ah. Um, and I think, and I think you know, you have to come from your your passion. Mm. So, because you know, doing a business, especially startup business, you know, that's so difficult. Mm -hmm. There's so many challenges. So, then uh, small things, you know, there's challenges happening. Then you might be like, oh, you know, this is too difficult. Right. You know. Uh, it becomes that much more difficult to keep going. But 
um, if you're coming from your passion, this is something that I'll be doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I could success or succeed or not, uh, may, may or may not be there, but um, I will still keep going, right? right? So that's, um, I think, you know, it's super important for you to come from your passionate, mm -hmm. you know, passion area. Uh, I heard that you've been contacted by not only Hollywood uh, film distribution companies, but also Netflix and Amazon. So are we talking about collaboration projects? I mean, how much progress has been made? Hmm. Yeah, we're still in the kind of discussion stage. Um, and uh, a lot of times these networks and studios reach out to us because uh -huh. they're looking for new stories. Uh -huh. So uh, if they're looking for like Steven Spielberg next story, they don't need our help. I mean, mm -hmm. they have all the networks. Uh, that they already have, but uh, a lot of times these uh, studios and networks are looking for, um, you know, like never been found before, like completely new stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, they reach out to us and then they're like, oh, do you guys have like young adult content, you know, from like uh, indie new creators? And we're like, oh yeah, definitely. We have like 70,000 stories, uh -huh. you know, why to choose from one of them? So um, yeah, like a lot of uh, interest, you know, from, mm -hmm established media companies uh, because everyone, a lot of companies are looking for original stories, right. um, you know, new storytelling. Mm -hmm. So they reach out to us and then try to, you know, see if there's any partnership opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what else is going on, but uh, I know yeah. that uh, you really can't I can't, I can't on the show. say everything, <laughs> but. <laughs> All right, uh, we are approaching the very end of our show. Is there a message you would like to deliver to our viewers that are watching right now that are perhaps interested in web comics and that whole mm -hmm. industry, comics industry? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I believe in the power of storytelling uh -huh. in general, and especially in Korea. Uh, I mean, yeah, we have a lot of awesome storytellers, uh, a lot of awesome artists as well so we uh, are really rooting for you know their success and uh, hopefully tapas can be part of the help uh, to help them you know give more global audience and more global success all right thank you so much for your time thanks for joining us thanks for having me yeah. again kamsamida Chen Kim, founder and CEO of Tapas Media, has created a new industry in the U.S. by introducing uh, the Korean webtoons, also known as webcomics. And we wish Tapas Media the best of all, and we hope that it continues to make great advancements. That is all for today, everyone. Please join us again next time. Thanks for watching.